Hey, welcome back to my channel. I'm Allie, and today I have another one of my three books by, today it's Paul Tremblay. I, in the month of September, have just taken the leap and head first into the work of Paul Tremblay. I don't know how this happened. I think it mainly has to do with the fact of the new release of The Beast You Are, which is an anthology of a mixture of short stories written by Paul Tremblay from past anthologies um, or pieces that he's done for certain things that he's compiled into this book with also the new short story, The Beast You Are. I did do a weekly vloggish style um, reading this if you want to check it out. But today I'm reading three other books by Paul Tremblay. Well, not just today. Go with me probably into October. But I read the first one, so I wanted to talk about it. Um, I'm choosing a little bit of a variety of his work, but the first one being A Head Full of Ghosts, which I just finished this past week, and I am obsessed. I gave this five stars. I loved this so much. This follows a family um, that has, you know, the mom, the dad, and they have two little girls. And this is very much so The Exorcist or a Haunting in Connecticut. Um, it is the type of ordeal where a entity has attacked a family and more so preyed on one of the children in the house. The older sister starts acting out and something has taken over her and made her a different person. She's doing very strange, bizarre things. And while some of these things are creepy and very um, horror themed like The Haunting of Connecticut, it is also at times very jarring and intense like The Exorcist. So you definitely have to like possession stories um, and darker horror when it comes to that element. But I just absolutely loved this. This family is wild. So they are having a hard time already. You kind of have like these bickering parents and you know, we're kind of in the point of view of the youngest daughter, Mary, who is watching her sister, Marjorie, go through this. And their parents think it is a bright idea to bring in a film crew and film like a reality show around this family. So while we're getting the point of view of them as kids and going through this, we're also getting the point of view of Mary, the younger sister in the future, and how she has... Um, adapted to life of being known as the little girl on that reality show and um, the story of their family and their lives being everywhere and how she kind of has to like hide her identi identity for a while and now she's coming forward and like talking to a reporter about it. Such a good book though. For my first Paul Trimbley, I was blown away and I absolutely loved this and it definitely motivated me to pick up this one, but also um, the ones that you guys will also see in this video. Um, but for book one, I love it. This is definitely one of my favorite books now. Really, really liked it. Five out of five. For the second book, I read probably the book that's recommended the most or that I see the most, and that is Cabin at the End of the World. And I do know that this is now like a movie or a show. I think it's a movie. I believe didn't M. Night Shyamalan get a hold of this and did... Um, a take on this story. I think it's called something a little differently, but, or it's worded a little differently. I'm not 100% sure, I have not seen it. Um, I was actually going to watch it one night and seeing that it was based on this. So I was like, I wanna wait because I do wanna read the book first. And I have to tell you guys, I went into this thinking like it was gonna be like his best book from what I've seen review wise. Just to, you know, remind you, I just read a head full of ghosts, which I loved. So going into this one, I was like, it's gonna be amazing. And this one just did not do it for me. I, I do really, really like his writing style. And I just find him very interesting. Like I'm always intrigued now, or now I am and very intrigued to read more from him because I have now completed three books from him, A Head Full of Ghosts, the Cabin at the End of the World, and also The Beast You Are. I did finish 
my whole video and reading vlog, um, reading that book full of just a bunch of short stories from him. And I'm still so intrigued by him and like just the things he thinks of, the things he puts together and kind of just how you sometimes have to take away from it your own perspective. I feel like everybody maybe takes something different away from each story, but this one just didn't set well with me. I found myself like really liking the characters. Um, this follows a family. There's two dads and their daughter and they're kind of out secluded in the middle of nowhere and they have like this cabin and then these strangers show up and pretty much tell them like you have to make like the ultimate sacrifice to save the world. And it like reading that synopsis saying that out loud this just sounds like oh my gosh this is a book right up my alley. But I feel like I was hooked at the beginning and at, up to that point and then the rest of the book just kind of just dwindled for me and I was losing kind of like my attention span with it. I just kept thinking like something's got to happen or something major is going to happen but it definitely is more of a speculative one where I'm like I don't know. I can definitely see where M. Night Shyamalan would probably get a hold of this and do something with it. I definitely still want to watch it but I don't know. This one just really didn't do it for me. I wasn't a, I wasn't as excited reading this like I was with The Head Full of Ghost or with The Beast You Are. And yeah, I just feel like I really liked that first quarter and then the next two quarters, I think, of the book. So up into 75%, I was just kind of like checked out for most of it and just like all right, let's something has to happen or we need to like wrap this up. And then ultimately with the ending, I just was not happy with the direction it went and I was pretty bummed about it. But um, I do have to say, I really like the extra stuff he always has in the back of his books about like the concept and like with this one, he actually goes into detail about each chapter, which I do think is really cool. But yeah, ultimately it just didn't do much for me and maybe I am not a part of the majority here. I don't know. If you like this one, you'll have to let me know. I think I would fall somewhere between a two and a three with this one. I think I would give it a three because I did enjoy the writing style for the most part, but I, d I don't think I could go over a three at all. So, that's why I land on this one, unfortunately. So I know I've technically have read three books already by Paul Trimbley, but I really wanted The Beast You Are to kind of be like a standalone book for just a reading vlog um, and do three other like solid actual novels of his for this video. So my last one for this video I read was The Paul Bearers Club. And this is actually pretty newer, I believe. I think it was last year that this published. Um, and I have to say, I've heard really mixed reviews about it. There's some people who really didn't like it and then there's some who absolutely loved it. I actually really liked it. What if the coolest girl you've ever met decided to be your friend? Art Barbara was so not cool. He was a 17 year old high school loner in the late 1980s who listened to hair metal who had to wear a monstrous back brace at night for his scoliosis and started an extra curricular club for volunteer pallbearers at poorly attended funerals. But his new friend thought the pallbearers club was cool. And she brought along her Polaroid camera to take pictures of the corpses. Okay, that part was a little weird. So it was her obsessive knowledge of a notorious bit of New England folklore that involved digging up the dead. And there were other strange things, terrifying things that happened when she was around, usually at night. But she was his friend, so it was okay, right? Decades later, Art tries to make sense of it all by writing The Paul Bearers Club, a memoir. But somehow this friend got her hands on the manuscript and, well, she has some issues with it. And now she's making cuts. Seamlessly blurring the lines between fiction and memory, the supernatural and the mundane, Paul Bear's Club is an immersive, suspenseful portrait of an unusual and disconcerting relationship. And that is my favorite part about this book. I feel like you have to kind of go into it, which I didn't originally, and maybe my rating would have even been higher if I had had that thought that you have to go into this as a fun 
ride as far as someone writing a novel and another person like critiquing it. But I, from the get go, enjoyed it so much. I loved um, Art's perspective in general um, and telling his life story pretty much. But it was so funny. Mercy, kind of going back through. So it's written in a way where this is the manuscript and like this is something I learned today and then it's like dated um Paul Bears Club meeting minutes and then it's like underlined in red and then like the little note and red next to it did you really write up minutes I hope you're joking it's just like little pieces of commentary all the way through and then it kind of comes more into play whenever it gets to like the juicier bits of like um frightening things that happened to Art while he was around this person and um, his overall speculation, I guess. Um, I also love this like little cover thing that makes it look like a like actual manuscript journal. I don't know, I found it really fun and um, very enjoyable. Now that I've read other books from him, I feel like I kind of knew what to expect a little bit more. It kind of veered off and directions that I didn't predict but at the same time like wasn't surprising because it is Paul Tremblay. But he just does a really good job at making some of the most like just like weird eerie scenes turn so like bone chilling at the same time and just like make you feel like a little uncomfy. Um, but I feel like if you're wanting to try his work and you're not so sure about um, maybe spookier reads, I do think that this is just like a fun laid back one that you could definitely try out. I like the overall um, idea of the Paul Bearers Club. I kind of was hoping that there's going to be more of that throughout the story instead of just jumping ahead to their adult young adults and adult lives. Um, and I think that's where I docked a star a little bit because I kind of wanted more of the club and more of their like high school childhood together um, than what we got. I still really, really enjoyed it. Um, I liked the writing style. I felt like it was so fast paced. It was so easy to just um, sink into it and just read it even like in a one setting it was just so good but I did notice myself start to kind of like nod off a little bit like further into the story with the like adult bits and stuff that I kind of wish had less of the book in a sense um all in all I gave it a four and I feel like if anything this video has definitely um convinced me that I am a Paul Tremblay fan um I definitely have some hits or misses with him um, I'm kind of finding that like even ground now because I feel like with A Head Full of Ghosts, I was blown away. Best book from him that I've read still. Um, five stars for that one. But then my very next one being The Cabin at the End of the World being my least favorite. Um, it was very odd, but I was still excited to dive back into his work and then reading the anthology the Beast You Are definitely helped pull me back out of that like kind of slump I felt like I was getting put into with The Cabin at the End of the World. Um, brought me back to The Paul Bearers Club, which I really enjoyed too. Um, wasn't my favorite from him. Definitely still a head full of ghosts. I love that one so much. And there is some really good short stories in The Beast You Are as well. And I have been looking up his other work. There is more things that I'm going to have to definitely pick up in the future and read because I definitely want to read more of his books. I am super intrigued now and um, another successful reading three books by an author. I really had fun with this one. Let me know if you guys have read any books by Paul Tremblay and which one was your favorite. Um, I'm always interested to see like if others differ with me or if we're kind of on the same like thinking process on which books are your favorite and which are your least favorite. Yeah, on this one, I definitely am standing pretty firm on A Head Full of Ghosts. <laughs> But thank you guys for hanging out with me for another one of these videos. Make sure you guys hit the thumbs up button so I know to do some more of these because um, I, I love these. I want to continue for sure.
so I will either way, but I really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. Um, thank you so much. I'll see you in my next video.